Fabrizio Romano reveals Edin Ketia's future after Crystal Palace approach. Plus, Arsenal set sights on a Brighton target as Mikel Oteta searches for a new striker. All this and much more coming up. But before that, if you are also passionate about Arsenal, subscribe to the channel now and stay up to date with everything that happens behind the scenes of the biggest team in the Premier League. And without further ado, let's get to today's news. Transfer journalist Fabrizio Romano has now provided an update on the likely future of Arsenal striker Edin Ketia. Arsenal forward Edin Ketia was recently the subject of an approach from Crystal Palace. However, the Gunners rebuffed that initial advance. That is not to say that Mikel Arteta couldn't be tempted to part with the Hale End Academy graduate. After all, initial approaches and offers are usually rejected, as it is all part of the negotiation process. Crystal Palace may well not have given up on bringing the 24-year-old to Selhurst Park in the upcoming January transfer window. Certainly, a move to the South London outfit may well appeal to Nketiah. The striker grew up in South London himself, and he would stand a great chance of being a regular starter for the Eagles. As things stand, he is very much a backup to Gabriel Jesus at the Emirates Stadium. Arsenal are also thought to be on the hunt for a new striker. If the Gunners do sign a new goalscorer, then Nketiah would likely be pushed down the pecking order even further. Despite this, Nketiah does not seem to have any immediate plans to move on from the club. According to Fabrizio Romano, speaking to Court Offside, I'm also aware there's been speculation again about Edin Nketiah being a target for Crystal Palace. My understanding is that Palace have liked Nketiah for a long time, but at the moment the situation is still quiet on club side as Arsenal are counting on him. I think Palace could be a great solution for him to play more and to show what he can do in the Premier League, but also, he wants to succeed at Arsenal. Whilst he isn't a nailed-on starter, Nketiah does still have an important role to play at Arsenal. Given Jesus has a patchy fitness record and has struggled in front of goal recently, Nketiah is likely to get plenty of game time. Having netted his first-ever Premier League hat-trick earlier this season and earned his Made in England cap, he will feel that he has what it takes to make the grade at Arsenal. Equally, the Gunners may not currently be in a position to replace Nketiah this winter. Whilst they are thought to be in the market for a new striker, they only have a limited transfer budget available to them at this time. It is likely won't be feasible for the club to bring in the top-class goalscorer they need until the summer, meaning Nketiah's services will certainly be required until the end of the current campaign at least. Nketiah will be looking at the second half of this season as a great chance for him to prove that he belongs at this level. Arsenal looks set to be involved in a tight race for the Premier League title. Nketiah will be desperate to show that can fire the Gunners to glory. Arsenal are reportedly keeping tabs on Brighton and Hove Albion target Ibrahim Osman. Arsenal appear to be on the lookout for another forward, with a number of potential options having already been linked with a move to the Emirates Stadium. Given Gabriel Jesus' current poor form and lack of goals, it is no surprise to see the Gunners linked with yet more attacking options. Edin Ketia's future in North London is also in doubt following a recent approach for his services from Crystal Palace. Whilst Arsenal knocked back that initial advance, the Eagles may well come in again for the 24-year-old in the upcoming January transfer window. Another player who may be on the move this winter is Ibrahim Osman. According to The Express, Brighton and Hove Albion are keen on the 19-year-old attacker. Arsenal, Crystal Palace and Fulham have also been credited with an interest in the Ghanaian teenager. Osman currently plies his trade for Danish club FC Nordjylland and is clearly a player with plenty of potential. He has made 16 appearances for the club this season and has chipped in with one goal and four assists. Should Arsenal make a move for Ibrahim Osman? Whether or not Osman is ready to make the step up to Premier League level remains to be seen. If he were to join Arsenal this winter, then he would be unlikely to feature much, if at all, for Mikel Arteta's first team side before the end of the season. Osman is clearly a player Arsenal are eyeing up as a potential future star. At this point, Osman certainly isn't the established, elite-level striker that it could be argued Arsenal need. However, the likes of Gabriel Martinelli and William Saliba were raw and unproven at the highest level when they first joined the club, too. On those occasions, investing in youthful potential paid off handsomely for the Gunners. That being said, players who can have a more immediate impact for the club are needed and securing their services should certainly be the priority. On top of a reliable goalscorer, defensive depth is needed, as is cover for Bukayo Soccer on the right flank. 
It will be fascinating to see if anything comes of Arsenal's apparent interest in Osman, but the teenager is unlikely to be anywhere near the top of Arteta's shopping list. That being said, if they can pick the player up for a fair price on top of getting their other, more pressing, business done, then signing Osman would be a worthwhile punt for Arsenal. Arsenal now have a clear hope. Regarding the injury that ruled Oleksandr Zinchenko out of the 2-1 loss at London rivals Fulham in Premier League on New Year's Eve. Goals in either half by Raul Jimenez and Bobby de Cordovarid handed Fulham a come-from-behind win against Arsenal. Bukayo Soccer gave Mikel Arteta's side an early lead at Craven Cottage. But the Gunners failed to hold on to also take back-to-back -back defeats. The Emirates Stadium natives also suffered a 2-0 defeat at home to West Ham United to end 2023, while Zinchenko ended the year on the sidelines after suffering a calf injury that ruled the left-back out of Arsenal's trip to Fulham. What has Mikel Arteta said about Oleksandr Zinchenko's calf injury? Arteta admitted following Arsenal's defeat at Fulham that the Gunners were still in the dark over the severity of Zinchenko's injury but he underwent scans on New Year's Day to assess the damage after reporting discomfort. It is also the second calf injury he has had this term. We don't know, Arteta noted in his post-game press conference after losing 2-1 at Fulham. He felt something in his calf, so he could not be available. We'll scan him tomorrow and see how far he'll go in these games. Now, Football.London reports that Arsenal hoped to have Zinchenko back soon, potentially at home to Liverpool in the FA Cup this Sunday. The Gunners feel he only suffered a slight issue that should not sideline the Ukraine hero for long. So, it might only be a one-match absence. Zinchenko only missed the opening day of the Premier League season due to the calf injury that ruined his pre-season. He had to sit out Arsenal's 2-1 win over Nottingham Forest back in August after failing to feature during the summer but he then played 18 straight fixtures. Arteta also started Zinchenko in 14 of his 18 consecutive Premier League matches between the two calf injuries. So, the Spaniard will be hoping that his latest problem does not prove to be a long-term issue. Especially after Kiwias' issues as a makeshift left-back last Sunday. Kiwias struggled to make an impact at either end of the pitch at Craven Cottage and he lost Jimenez for the Mexicans' goal. His problems even tempted Fulham to target Arsenal's left-hand channel before Arteta would, ultimately, haul the Poland centre-back off at the break. Well, folks, those were today's news. If you enjoyed the video and want to stay informed about everything happening with our beloved team, you know what to do. Subscribe to the channel now and hit the bell so you won't miss any updates. Thanks for joining us and see you in the next video.